Okay, so this stem is, uh, is, is badly oxidized. Otherwise, it is not in very bad shape at all. It was quite clean internally. And you can see there is um, no oxidation here where this actually fit into its respective mortise. Now this pipe is, uh, this, is this is off of a calabash uh, that has a uh, essentially a military mount. So this is going to friction fit into that mount and is going to, you know, the pipe's going to be held in place by that. So we want to be really careful not to alter this part of the stem at all. Uh, basically we want to, any sanding, any, any refinishing that we do, we want to occur, even any buffing, we would want to occur on this side of this line. So we're going to take care to not change anything down here. And therefore to not alter the fit of this tenon into its respective mortise. Okay, so this is ebonite and it is oxidized and um, the oxidation is due to an ultraviolet reaction with the cross-linked sulfur molecules that create sulfuric acid which when exposed to water <clears throat> or to moisture, humidity, uh, makes this, this ugly, uh, ugly color appear. Now I could just sand this, and, and it's a perfectly reasonable way to go. Uh, probably not starting at the, uh, you know, the, the highest uh, grid here, this, this uh, 1500 grid of micro mesh pad. It's, it's gritty, but it, it's probably not going to have enough bite to really get into some of this because it is such a heavy oxidation. So I'd probably start with something like a 400 grit uh, wet dry sandpaper and then move into the micro mesh pads. However, I've had the experience, and, and I've seen this with, with several uh, stems that are like this, where if you go through this, that process, you have a, a black stem, it looks pretty good, and then as soon as it gets wet, it oxidizes again. And what I think is happening, um, and I'm not sure about this, but I think uh, you're only removing the surface oxidation. There's still some UV damage that's below the surface that just has not yet had the opportunity to react with the water in, in either the ambient uh, atmospheric humidity or from your mouth when you put it in your mouth. And you've basically exposed that surface and now it's just waiting for moisture to react. So to try to, to sort of deal with that and to um, allow me to completely remove all the oxidation from the surface, what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak it in a solution that is going to oxidize everything. Now, you've probably heard reference to people using OxyClean, um, which is a, a cleaner that you can, you can pick up at the store, and it works great for this. Um, you would mix up an OxyClean solution, drop the stem in that, and OxyClean will basically oxidize. Um, it, is, uh, it, it basically is a peroxide generating uh, chemical uh, mixture and the peroxide will will oxidize this. Um, it also includes some soap which helps with cleaning. It's not going to do anything to clean off the oxidation. It's just going to really fully oxidize the surface so that we can then sand it off and uh, be left with um, you know a relatively unoxidized uh, ebonite below that. So I'm not going to use OxyClean because um, well it, it I don't have a good reason, it's just I've, I've learned to use um, something different. So I will get that set up and I'll show you how I'm doing this, but you could uh, certainly do the same with OxyClean and it'll work just as well. So I'll be back in just a moment with the materials. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of some uh, petroleum jelly, Vaseline, white petrolatum, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is going to be a protective coating around this um, tenon portion, which I've told you we don't want to modify. And we're going to put a really nice thick layer of this. Erring on the side of too much, because I... Keep in mind, if we change this, if we, you know, it, decrease the diameter of this, it will not fit into the mortise anymore and we'll have to do something to correct that. And I'd really rather not do that because it fits in the pipe very well. So we're just going to put a rather healthy coating of, of 
petroleum jelly on there and that should protect it from the chemical reaction that we're about to, to start. Okay, there we go. Um, set this up so I don't get Vaseline all over the towel. Now, you remember I, I mentioned that, I hope I mentioned, that the insides of these stems have all been cleaned. Uh, and that's important because we're about to immerse this in a, in a cleaning, well, you know, in a peroxide solution and uh, you know it's going to get it's going to extract a lot of gunk uh, from the stem it's going to get dirty and I'd like to minimize the uh, the amount of stuff that comes out just because I don't want to have to use a really large volume so if the insides clean it's less work that the solution has to use what I have here is a container uh, it's a it's a tall I can't tilt it sideways to show you but it's a tall jar this is actually a jar that I got uh, off of my wife, she buys spices in these jars, um, and I've got markings here at the one third point, or sorry, the two thirds point. So this is two thirds full of hot water, hot tap water. So it's not uh, it's not boiling hot; it's just hot to the touch. And I will now bring that up to its full volume with uh, just regular old. Uh, this is, I believe, three percent hydrogen peroxide, just drugstore hydrogen peroxide. I think it's 3%. Yes, it's 3%. Um, this is essentially, uh, so it's going to be a 30% or 33% solution of hydrogen peroxide in hot water. Forgive me while I do this off screen. Thirty-three percent solution of three percent hydrogen peroxide in water, in hot water. So that's what we have here now, and we will just insert the stem into that solution, and we will let that soak in there for a few hours, um, maybe two hours. And what this is going to do is it's going to fully oxidize that surface and allow us to. Um, come back and thoroughly sand off the layer of oxidation. It will make that a bit easier just by raising all the uh, the surface, getting all the oxidation to the surface, and it will also make it more complete because that means that we're we're going to be eliminating that layer of, of sub-oxid, not sub-oxidized, but oxidized material that hasn't yet come to light because it hasn't had the opportunity to react with moisture. So we're basically this is sort of a nuclear option where we're going to wipe everything out on the surface, cut it all off, and start fresh. It works quite well. OxyClean will do the same thing. It works uh, just as well. Uh, it's just you can buy this this big bottle of hydrogen peroxide, which I'm not going to be able to bring back into shot without spilling everything. Uh, this cost uh, less than a dollar, and hot water is you know from the tap. So uh, I think the OxyClean is going to be a bit more costly, but it works well. And if that's what you want to use, that's fine. I like that this is a liquid. The OxyClean is a powder. I don't have to worry about getting it into solution. I just have to basically squirt the two together. Uh, I don't even stir this. The diffusion is usually enough to, to keep things mixing. And I will let that sit for uh, an hour or two and get back to you. Thanks. Okay, so we've uh, we let that soak for uh, three hours, and I've rinsed it twice with just uh, regular water to to uh, sort of take out any of the uh, peroxide that might have been remaining. Uh, just to clarify the recipe for that, in case anyone wants to try it, it was uh, two parts water, which was uh, warm or hot tap water, so as hot as you can get it from the tap. It doesn't need to be boiling. Two parts water to one part 3% uh, peroxide, which is just regular drugstore peroxide. Um, mix those together, add the stem, leave it soak for two, three, four hours. Uh, the timing is not really that, that critical, a few hours. And uh, don't forget anything that you want to maintain, you want to cover with, with some uh, Vaseline or petroleum jelly. And I'm just wiping this off. Now if this, is, if this were a particularly dirty um, stem, uh, there would be a lot of stuff coming off. You can see this towel is turning a bit brown, but 
there wasn't a lot of soil on this. There wasn't a lot of, um, this is mostly just oxidation. So I wasn't expecting this to, to really have a film on it um, because this stem actually hadn't been very heavily smoked. But if this was like, you know, a really grungy estate pipe, uh, you'd, you'd go through several paper towels just taking sort of the brown slime off. And you can see this is still discolored, but what we've done is we've kind of produced a consistent level of oxidation across this whole thing. And now we will go ahead and go through the, uh, the sanding steps. Um, which are, you know, similar to, to what you've already seen. Uh, starting in this case, just because of the condition of this, I'm going to start with uh, 400 grit sandpaper, and then switch over to the um, to the micro mesh pads, and work my way through the grits on those. So uh, starting at going from the 400 grit, actually, I'm sorry, I'll go from the 400 grit to a to a 600 grit sandpaper, and then jump to the 1500. Uh, it'll be wet sanding, so the sandpapers, and all the way up to 3200, I'll, I'll sand with water, and then I'll switch to the um, to the finer uh, grade or finer grit mesh uh, micro mesh pads, and I'll sand dry until we're complete, and I will show you what that looks like. As so here we um, you can see the beginning of. Um, the sanding process, uh, still using wet, wet and dry sandpaper here. And we're just going along very slowly and trying to get that first layer of oxidation off. And you can see, you know, it is, it is coming off. We are, we are definitely getting to black, but there is a lot of brown that needs to come off. So this is going to take quite some time and we want to be careful when we're doing this because we don't want to lose any of the you know the crispness of this this button crease we want to keep that a nice 90 degree angle we don't want to disrupt any of the um, sort of uh, uh, cove work here the the, the, the coves and uh, bead uh, that's that's part of this you know we'd, we'd like to keep that as, as nice and crisp as possible so it's it's not just rough sanding there, there's a lot of detail work here you can see I've inserted this into uh, the, actually the same block. I just drilled another hole. Again, used a little bit of uh, typewriter paper to form a, a seal there, and uh, it's it's in there nice and tight. Uh, I can see where the border is, where where this starts to turn black, so I know that I can sand right up to that without having to worry about um, causing any damage to the to the tenon, tenon, and without you know, knowing that I won't disturb the fit when it gets back in the pipe. So I'm going to proceed with this. I, I don't want to waste too much of your time showing you me sanding, but I wanted to make sure that you saw what this initial step looked like. And it really is just a matter of continually putting a little bit of water on the paper, sanding slowly and carefully. Well, it's uh, about two hours and eight pieces of sandpaper later. And I have finally completed what I'm going to call the initial rough sanding of, of this uh, using 400 grit sandpaper. So this is just the first step and I'm about ready to call it a night here. So what I'm going to do, just to let you know about all the steps, is I'm going to coat this in mineral oil. And the reason I'm going to do that <coughs> is that I have just opened up a bunch of new fresh ebonite surfaces that uh, may be ripe for oxidation and I'm, I want to protect those. I also want this to sink in a bit, um, and it will help me, you know, lubricate things a bit for the next sanding. And you can see, if you look at this, well, maybe you can see, there are still some brown areas in here. I didn't want to get too much into the detail with the very coarse grit sandpaper, because I don't want to lose that detail. So as I move on to the 600 grit, I'll be much more careful about you know trying to get every bit of brown out of that, and uh, you know work my way through this. But overall, this is looking uh, well, certainly much better than it looked before we started uh, working on it, and it's coming along. So we're gonna we're gonna get a nice stem out of this at the end. So I will set this aside for the night. I just wanted you to see that I was putting the mineral oil on there. I don't want to play any tricks on you. Uh, and the next time I get a chance to work on this, I will uh, sand it at, at 
Alright folks, so we have completed this stem now. Um, last time you saw it I had just finished the uh, rough sanding and had uh, coated it with some mineral oil to leave it overnight. This actually, I, I worked on this for uh, three evenings, uh, probably spent about an hour each evening. With this kind of, of a job, it, it's best to not think that you're going to be able to complete this in a single uh, evening or single setting. Just because, you know, you want to be careful around these, these detail points and you want to be careful not to change the, the tenon and, 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 or to, you know, round over the, the button and, and all that. So it's best to not try to concentrate on something like this for three hours. So we just split it up a little bit each evening and it's now done. So this, I finished this last night. I coated it with uh, mineral oil and let it soak in. And for all the stems, I, I did an overnight soaking with mineral oil. That, that seems to have worked really well. Normally I'd, I'll do, you know, 15 minutes or so, but I, I may start doing the overnight when I have time because I, I really like the way these turned out. And now I'm just using a piece of a just regular paper towel to buff this out. So this has been, you know, we started at uh, 400 grit sandpaper, uh, moved to 600 and then to the 1500 micromesh pad wet sanded from 1500 up to 3200 micromesh and then switched over to uh, dry sanding with the 3600 up to 12,000 micromesh. After that was done I gave it a liberal coating with mineral oil, let it sit overnight and now I'm just wiping it off. And as you can see, I'll, I'll zoom you in a bit here so you can hopefully pick this up better. Um, you know, we've got a, a mirror polish finish on this. This uh, stem is as good as new and ready to go back on the pipe. So this was, a, this was sort of an extreme example of severe oxidation. We got rid of all that oxidation. We've uh, protected it with the oil. We've gotten the uh, sort of just below the surface oxidation out uh, so that the stem will probably be uh, serviceable for quite a while before it needs another... Uh, cleaning and if it's maintained like I showed you with that first stem you won't have to ever go through that process. So, so to so. just uh, kind of review the, the three stems that we cleaned today this was the first one and this was the guy that we just used the uh, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser on. You can see that you know it's got a nice shiny black finish it's not as high gloss we're not getting that mirror like effect that we get from from uh, using the micro mesh pads but in terms of just a regular cleaning of your pipe stems, um, the, the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser does a really nice job, gets rid of any of that light surface oxidation, and the overnight mineral oil treatment, bu buffing out with a paper towel afterwards, you know, gives you a nice shine. Uh, this is ready to go back on a pipe, and I think for the most part, if you're just maintaining your pipes, this is, this is the, the kind of treatment that would uh, keep you in business, and, you know, we're looking at a couple dollars investment for a magic eraser and a, and a bottle of drugstore mineral oil. For, you know, slightly more stubborn or neglected pipes, this was the guy that we used the micro mesh pads on. We started with the, uh, I believe it was the 3600 and went up to 12,000 grit. And uh, you can see that this is more mirror-like in terms of the finish, nice and shiny, but we got all the the oxidation's gone, and this is ready to go back on the pipe with just the micro mesh pads, and again an overnight mineral oil treatment, buffing out with just a, a paper towel in the end. A bit more of an investment here; those micro mesh pads are going to run you, you know, somewhere between ten and twenty dollars, but it's a good investment because they're reusable. You can clean them, and they last for quite a long time. Finally, we've got the, uh, you know, our problem child, which was this uh, horribly oxidized pipe. Uh, stem that we actually went ahead and soaked in uh, a peroxide solution to bring out all that sort of subsurface oxidation and make sure that we were able to to get this uh, completely cleaned off. Uh, and this was uh, started off with 400 grit sandpaper, uh, wet sanded with 400 grit, then 600 grit, and then wet sanded with micro mesh pads from 1500 down to 3200. And then we switched over to dry sanding, uh, 3,600 up to 12,000. And again, an overnight mineral oil treatment and buffed it out with a paper towel. So it's that simple. And this, you can see, this is this finish is like new and it's ready to go back on the stem. So I hope you learned something from this. I uh, hope you're going to be able to use some of this in taking care of your own stems. Uh, as you can see, it's not difficult. 
and there's a lot of uh, tricks and tips that you can pick up uh, to do these things. You can buy buffers and you know use use uh, expensive tools like that, and and that's great if you've got them. But if all you've got is uh, you know a little bit of elbow grease and a few dollars worth of uh, abrasives and, and mineral oil, you, you can do just a fine job on keeping your stems looking like new. So thank you for watching. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, appreciate all my subscribers. If you haven't subscribed and you'd like to see future videos like this, please go ahead so you can uh, keep up to date. And feel free to comment. Tell me about methods that you use on your stems. Uh, ask questions. I'm, I'm happy to, to answer any questions at all. And I really appreciate the time you took to, to watch this. So take care, uh, take good care of your pipes, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.